side. Oh, if we haven't met before, my name is Rebecca Redican. You can call me Becky. If we have met before, bring it in. Virtual hug. I'm sending you one right now. Oh, I felt that. I felt that. Um, it's so wonderful to be with you today. This is my first ever softer side and as a beginner sewer, I am so excited about this show. I did mention to Bernie that I was a beginner sewer and I don't know whether or not she forgot that the clocks here in the UK had changed, but seems very empty over there. Very empty. Bernie? Where are you, Bernie? I haven't brought my sewing kit. I am a beginner. If you want me to whip up a stretchy waistband, that's about all I can do. Bernie? Maybe if I think really, really hard, she might get here. What do you reckon? Bernie, are you here? I'm here. Hey. We're just having a little tease, everyone. I'm so excited to be working with you, Becky. I've been waiting so long for to look on our calendar and see that you're on the show with me. Because like I say, I found out now you do a bit of sewing. So, you know, if I ever can't make it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not go that far. Um, it's so great to be here. And I tell you what, today I have got absolutely oodles and oodles for you. Now, I've been given some wonderful samples by Bernie. I'm just going to have to give you a heads up on these. Remember that we have got demos galore today, as well as all of those wonderful demos. I am going to be bringing, uh, we're going to be bringing to you some sensational savings. We are bringing to you today, um, your wonderful saver stitch is coming up in a little bit. I have got customer discounts galore and we are going to be making with some of our wonderful Gemini elements today as well. This is what you're going to be getting your hands on. Um, and this is what we're going to be demoing for you. Um, first off, we've got loads of treats and loads and loads of goodies on the way. So if you do want to get involved, now is your chance. We're going to be bringing to you your Gemini sewing and quilting machine feet set as well today. And we've got a mega saving on that, haven't we, Bernie? We have. It's absolutely amazing. These multifunction dies, you can do so much with them, Becky. You've got, we give you the set where you can do three things in each, but actually I'm going to make something different today with them so you can actually make other stuff with them just using that. It, I wouldn't say use your imagination, but it's once you start making them, you can get, you know, a feel for it. Actually, I can use that to make that. I can use that to make that. So we're actually going to make a thread catcher with these today. So see, you're getting that set of three in there. I'm also, when we come on to our storage templates make later on, I'm going to be making stuff with there. Well, I'm going to use, show you how to use all our different machine feet as well. I've got so much, Becky, I don't know where... Uh, where to start? We started <laughs> with all of the wonderful multifunctional dies that we've talked about. And this is the thing when you're a crafter, isn't it? It's workability, it's usability. And we have got absolutely loads of different ways for you to create wonderful keepsakes, incredible gifts, of course, for loved ones. And let's be totally honest, sewing has just gone from strength to strength with the help of Sewing Bee and other TV shows like that. So if you want to take the time today to maybe explore this craft even more, you're in the right place. All of your info is on the screen right there for you. You're getting 14 elements within this and it's a dramatic saving today. You're getting it for just 59.98 here in the UK or if you're in dollars, 79.90 only. And as you can see, that is a huge saving. Do you fancy getting crafting? Me too. Grab yourself a brew and get ready. Bernie, shall we get crafting? I'm just going to get started. Let's I, do it. I, you know, the, the certain shows that I love, I would say love prepping for more than others. It depends what I've got. I absolutely adore what we've got on the show today. And these multifunction dies are brilliant. The ones I'm going to concentrate on today are the ones, the set where you can make the drum bag, the drawstring. I mean, look at this, absolutely fantastic. You're getting all of the dies to cut them with and make them up. But I'm actually, like I say, I'm going to make a thread catcher that you can put on the front of your machine. And then if you're anything like me and really messy in your craft room, you can get your threads in there and at least it'll save some going on the carpet or the floor. Right, so the other thing what I'm going to use is some of the fabulous fabric. Now, I know everyone has been busy, busy, busy ordering the fabric and I'm, I know we've still got some of this one left I love this one that orangey tone in there the blossom is just absolutely fantastic so what I'm going to do is I'm going to first cut my pieces out to make this now 
I'm just going to grab another piece because I want to make the base. So with, when you get the dies, you're going to look at them and think, oh, well, if we look at this one here, well, that doesn't make a circle to make the base of the bag. But as you can see, it's got an open part to it. And what you do is you actually cut it on the folds. You have your fabric cut, which I'll show you when we put it on the plates. And you get instructions in here as well. So it's going to tell you how to cut all of your pieces. So you're not going to get stuck if you do have... Um, any problems and also on the other side it tells you how many pieces of each to cut and there's videos online what our Lizzie has done if you go onto our YouTube channel you can get the videos on there to see how to make them as well brilliant all right so I'm going to get my plate now I know these are sold out but Becky uh, Becky doesn't know about our new plates we've got new cutting plates for fabric Becky <gasps> Oh, these are fantastic. These are brilliant. So you can still use the plates that come with your Gemini. Yeah. But we've brought um, these different metal plates out. It's a bit like, you know, when you do double-sided dies, you have to get the double-sided plates. Yes. So with these ones, these are going to look after your clear plates even longer. So they're absolutely great. So mm. I've got my plates here. And I'm going to go for the smaller size for the outside and I want to do my circle now I don't know whether I can get the do you know what I can get them on at the same time boom one pass absolutely fantastic right so to get the base of my bag to get that circle I've got a piece of the fabric there and I've just folded it in half and I'll just pop that away there and then I say this open end here is going to go on that fold of the fabric now I just want to grab some tape now I do prefer to tape my dies down because I want them to stay in place because I don't want to waste that fabric. So I'm just going to get that on there, move it down a little bit. I love that fabric colour. It's beautiful, oh, isn't it? I'm so happy. It is so, it's so rich as well. It is absolutely gorgeous. That's your uh, blossom orange if you do fancy it. There we go. So I'm going to stick that bit down on there. And then, like I say, I can get this piece on as well. So now with this one, I need two parts to this one. So I've got two pieces of fabric. I'm just going to fold those. Fold. Let's see if we can get this in. Oh, wrong way. See, you have to get the open bit on the fold. Look like me or I would have ended up with two four pieces. rectangles. Yeah. <laughs> You could always use them for something else if you do that. Exactly. Accidentally. Well, the thing is, you could join them as well, you know. Yeah. I mean, that's the good thing with... Um, you know, with you getting a half a metre of fabric for your this, you've got plenty there to play with. And oh, I was tidying yesterday my bags from last weekend. And I, last weekend we had the Shape Creator on and I cut loads of two and a half inch squares. Mm. And I've popped them in my tub. I have a tub at home with all my two and a half inch squares in. So that when I get to finally stitch them all together, I've got lots of two... Ooh. Now, I'll tell you why I did that in a second. That made me jump. Um, just to make something easy if you want to sew them together so what that crack is there is because those dies are going in straight i forgot about that so what we normally do is if you can pop them on a tilt and what it means is if i take this off and show you when i first put that in the machine the machine got to all of that edge there at the same time so that's that's what that little clunk was if you can pop them on a little bit of a slant i forgot because i was putting them both on at the same time they'll still cut absolutely fine um, but it just saves you getting that noise if that if that did alarm you a little bit all right so i'll get that one off there that one off there and i want to show you just on this bit here if i just pop that one to the side a second so that one's cut right to the end you can see there and then this one here hasn't quite just caught now that's my positioning and it's a tiny tiny little about two threads so all you're going to do is get your scissors and just clip them we've seen these scissors i've got becky these are the rose gold okay. scissors oh, they're not sorry. supposed to be on till later in the show but i wanted to use them <laughs> <laughs> They are wonderful and we have got them coming up. Why do you love them so much? So I absolutely love these because, they, for one, they, I mean, they're gorgeous, look at the rose gold, but also they've got a flat bottom edge. So when you are cutting, it's flat. If you've got a rounded part on your scissors, sometimes you can't cut as flat to the, yeah. to the base. So because you've got that straight edge, they stay straight when you cut in as well. 
absolutely fantastic. Brilliant. Right, so I've got my base here and I've got these. Now, what I've got here is I've got a couple of little bits I just need to snip. And again, it's where I positioned that die. There we go. And I say, if you put it on the diagonal, it is going to cut a little bit better. I'm just now these scissors are ultra sharp, and I'm being trying to be clever, just clipping all the little bits at the same time. There we go. Oh, I've cut into it there, Becky. That was my fault. But there we go. Oh, there's another one. We've had loads of messages in. Have Lovely, we? Um, uh, Lini, I think it is, says, Bernie, I love the fabric of your dress that it's, uh, it's made from. It's really pretty. Oh, thank you. Isn't so it? it is, I didn't make it myself, unfortunately. I did order it online. Um, well, as we do in everything nowadays, aren't we? Everything's, uh, everything's ordered online. Um, <laughs> but thank you. It's, it's one of my, um, thought I'll get some nice bright, like spring-like yeah. spring light colours for the show. Right, so what we're going to do is these two panels here are going to make the outside. If I just grab one of these so you can see, it's this panel round here that I'm making. So we just need to join these pieces together to make that and to make a tube. So I'm going to set my machine to a quarter of an inch seam. Now later on when we've got the um, machine feet on the shore. I'm going to show you a few little hints and tips as well on that. And the one thing when you're joining fabric that's got a direction on, just double check first that you've got that that going the correct way. Mm -hmm. So you can see they all go in the same way. Yeah. So then I'm going to put right sides together and I'm just going to sew a quarter inch seam down each side so it makes it into a just a tube. Okay. Now, I've already stitched the lining for this one, and in the lining, I left a gap in the side. But on the outside, you don't need to leave a gap. There we go. And then I'm going to sew down the other side. And I've just done a normal stitch length. What I did forget to do on the other side was just do a little reverse stitch. And that's really important, isn't it, for anyone who's new? Just with it security. is. Yeah, because if you don't do one, and I've done one here, whereas I didn't do the reverse on the other side, if I now put ease that apart, you can see it's coming apart a little bit. Yes. So if that happens and you forget, all you need to do is take it back to your machine and go the other way and then just stitch down again over the top of your other stitching. So you don't need to unpick anything. Easy. You just go back over it. It is. It's. It's good because, see, you can't. I mean, you can go wrong. We are. I mean, I go wrong regularly. You know. But with stitching, it's either you're unpicking and redoing it, or you're just going to sew over it. So, so we've got our outside sorted. Now, what I need to look at is how we're going to put this base in. So, we're go, I'm going to show you how you put in a circle base. And the best thing to do is mark your work into quarters. So because we cut it on the fold, we know it's already folded like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut a little nick out of that corner. Now we're going to do a quarter inch seam. So I did that about an eighth of an inch. You don't want to go too far in. And then again on the other side, a little nick. I mean, you can see how sharp these scissors are. They're absolutely beautiful. And then we're going to turn it the other way and you're going to match those little notches up. So if I move it down back, you can see it better there. There we go. You match that up and I just give that a little finger press and again I'm going to put another two little notches here and then I'm going to do the same with my base but obviously uh, sorry not the base the tube I've just sewn obviously with that one we've already got um, the side seams so they're going to be notched anyway so all I'm going to do is open that up match up my side seams like that and then I know then that that end, I'll make sure I get this the right way, not upside down, that's it, so this is going to be the bottom. So I know that that end is the quarter part. So it's with, when you're matching anything up like this, just break it down into sections. Mm. Because what sometimes um, people try and do is just start attaching it and go all the way around. And what you find is you can get to the end, oh, 
got a bit of tape and stuck on like there. Leftovers, sometimes. yes, it's a bit baggy, isn't it? Yeah, and if you're doing something like this, that means that you would have to then unpick yeah. to take it out. So, I'm going to show you some. Um, this is how I do curves, okay? So, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to get a pin. I don't use pins very often, as you'll soon get to know. That, Becky. I like my clips, but when you're doing curves, really, it's um, clips are. You, you want pins rather than clips. And then what I'm going to do is just start, oh, if I find, find one of my notches on the bottom, get hold of that, and match it up with one of those notches at the side. And the reason I start from the side is because if I get all the way around and I have gone off a little bit, what it means is my side seam is still free. I can always just take it in a little bit. Ah, uh, yeah. So you can alter it. So don't ever worry you know, if you do struggle to get to get it to fit. And what I do is I sew with my curved piece on the top. Okay. There we go. So I've just turned that over. And I've just popped a little pin in there. And then I'm going to shorten my stitch length as well because I'm sewing round, sewing round a curve and I've got my quarter inch set. So I'm just going to take this under the machine, pop it in. If you've got a needle up down feature on your machine, this is the brilliant time to use it because you don't want it to keep moving about and then I do a couple of little stitches and do a couple of little reverse and then what you can see I'm holding the curve bit the bottom bit I'm going to keep straight it's the curve bit I'm going to be moving and what you do is because it's a circle it's cut on the bias so you know if, if you cut on the diagonal it's like stretchy mm. you've got that little bit of play and what we want to aim for is that next notch is going to match up with that side seam so we're going to ease it in so i know you said you've been doing some um dressmaking becky haven't you I you'll have. have heard have you heard that term yet then easing in if you yes easing in sleeves and easing in sleeves yes this is what it is so in effect we sort of putting a sleeve on here ah, really right. because it's the same thing you're gonna you're putting a curved edge to a straight edge and just take your time working your way around i am a fast sewer i do like to go at full speed steam ahead <laughs> <laughs> i get i get in trouble off leanne you know becky if if i've been using the machine and then leanne comes in she'll know i've got it set on full speed she'll say bernie's been in bernie's been on the I love machine that. <laughs> bernie how are you at sewing and answering questions at the same time i'm all right i Go thought for you it. might be because i've got loads for you oh, so lovely. many people messaging in um first person um, is michelle and michelle hi michelle Michelle is saying, can you tell me if these sewing scissors are as good as the CC purple handed scissors? Do they have the same blade? So they have a different blade. These are for fabric. So you wouldn't cut your paper. The purple handed scissors, which I've got here, these are, I think, no, we might have to jump to, I think these are titanium blades. Mm -hmm. So these will cut your paper and your fabric. Yes. But these ones, you're going to keep these for you, for your fabric. You're not going to cut your paper with those. Or you could get two pair and have one for paper and one for um, your fabric as well. But they're lovely. They are really lovely. And you know you get that, oh, I'm, going to, I'm going to do the sound. You know you get that satisfying. Oh, I love it, yeah. If I do it up to my mic, yeah, go I'll on. hear it. Oh, listen. I love it. I love oh. that sound. It's just a satisfying sound when you hear scissors like that going through fabric. I adore working here because so many people do weird things that I thought were really weird. <laughs> like I love the sound of a scissor and I love yeah. like the smell of new paper. <laughs> so yeah, I get that. I so tell much. you what I don't love the sound of polystyrene. You know when you're taking something out of a box. Oh, that's... I that. knew that you and I were connected. Oh. That is literally my phobia. I have a proper I phobia of it. I hate it. Can I just let you know, scissors, half of the stock has oh, gone. Wow. We've got hardly any of them available. <laughs> so if you do want to grab them and, and, you know, trust us on this, use your fabric scissors just to be a fabric. You will notice the difference. They're available on your screen right now. So do grab them whilst you can. Wow. Well done, everyone, because they are lovely. Um, I know they came out with um, Sarah's So Lovely range. And I mean that the fabric in there was just amazing. Actually, I've got a sample later on um, of something that was made with that so lovely fabric. I'll mention it when we get to it. Um, but it, it, you know, when Sarah brings her ranges out, we know, we know that it's sort of like a limited run. Yeah. So you do have to grab them 
you know, when, when they're there. So, yeah, well done for everyone. So, I'm just on this last quarter now. Now, I got to my side seam there and my notch matched. So, because my notch matched, I know I can carry on, work all the way around and get my circle in. So, I know some people are a little bit um, daunted by um, doing sort of circles and curves and things like that. But if you just take your time, there's a phrase we say up here, I haven't said it, Becky, um, you gan canny. So you just take it easy. <laughs> but the way you say up here, you gan canny. My friend Val will be watching laughing at us because she always <laughs>, laughs when I say that. I love that. Um, but yeah, just take your time. And it's one of them where you want to enjoy your sewing as well. You know, just keep adjusting. Like you see, I'm just adjusting there. And then I've got another, say, inch and a half to sew here. So I'm just going to make sure that I haven't got any creases underneath and you can feel you can feel that you haven't got any creases Perfect. and then I'm going to go back up and I'm just going to sew over the stitching that I started on just to secure that in and then there we've got our circle in the bottom perfect how fab is that brilliant, brilliant brilliant so the next thing I'm going to do now so I say I've already sewn the line and so that's my outer piece I've done exactly the same with my lining and I've used here the the green oh now was this the lily pads I think this was the green lily pads this green is unbelievable it's like a it's like a sea green like jadey colour it's mm -hmm. absolutely gorgeous and they all go so well together so I've done the outside but I have left a gap in the side so that's the other thing normally if you're making some sort of bag or pouch normally you'll leave the gap in the bottom yeah. when you're doing a curve like that you always want to really if you can leave your gap in a straight seam because that's easier to close so I've got the back there so I've got my pieces nearly assembled and the other thing is we need some wadding now there's a lot of different waddings on the market. I've used here our foam. Now, I, I, I know I'm sure we won't have any in stock at the minute, but I bet you everyone's got some in the stash. And this is like, a, it, it gives something rigidity and it gives it structure. So if you're doing something like that, you could put two layers of thick interfacing on. You can use wadding and make it really small if you want. But whatever, if you're making a rigid one like this, I like to make it separate rather than attach it to the back of the fabric. And all I've done with my scissors is I just went round the top and I just cut about roughly about a half an inch off the top because I want to make this a little bit smaller so it doesn't bulk out inside. So that's that part. And then the next thing we do is we want a little, put a little um, strap, attach a strap to the top there that's going to sit so we can hang it next to our sewing machine. So all I've done here was I used, where's my piece again? So my, my piece that I used the first time, so I used this to cut the outsides. Yes. What I did was I cut one more of them and then I just folded it in half and I just sewed around two sides and turned it through. And then I, I made it a little bit shorter because I wanted it a little bit shorter. But that's showing you where you can still use these um, dies as well. I always have tape all over my dies. Look, mm -hmm. so <laughs> well, I can reuse that. It's yeah. not going in the bin yet. I can use that again. <laughs> <laughs> so I say all I did, I'll turn it through. I just turned it through. And then I give it a little bit of a press just to get those nice points. So we're now going to start assembling it. These, pro these projects, are, once you get into them as well, they don't take you as long as you, you might think. Um, I mean, start off with one of these before you start moving on to the, um, the one with the top, I'm trying to think what you call it, the drawstring. I couldn't think of the word drawstring. Oh, the drawstring so the drawstring back. one, yeah. you know, we've got that one or you've got the um, one with the zip in as well. So you can move on to those ones, you know, start with the... the the basket first and then work your way up okay right so I'm putting my um filling just uh, my form just to the side for now because I'm going to construct my two pieces now what I like to do is when I'm doing a bag I like to put the outside piece which is going to be my orange one here I like to turn that one the right way. Looks like it's going to end up some sort of hat, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and then I want to put my lining on the, the wrong side facing. I'll explain why in a second when I put them together. And then what we want to do is put our outer bag inside our lining, if you like, right sides together. 
And what that means is, it means that your hole is on the outside, so it's easier when you're turning it through. If your hole's on the inside, it can be a little bit more tricky. Mm -hmm. So now, this is where I'm going to get my um, clips out. I'm going to join my side seams because I know they're going to match. So I'll just get some of my clips. There we go. I have loads of them. I have loads of them. I think I might have hundreds of these quilting clips. They're absolutely fantastic. So let's have a go. So I'm going to clip one side. I'm going to go to the other side. And again, this is where you're doing it in sections. So a bit like when you're putting the bottom on, go around in sections and then you're going to make it equal. And like you say, Becky, you're not going to get all the way around the other side and have one bit shorter than the other. Yeah. And then when I hold it like that, and know then, can you see how that's going to fit perfectly? I'm just going to put another clip in the centre there. Now on the other side, I want to fit in my little handle. So I'm just going to, I'm going to use my mat for this. So what I want to do is find my centre point on here. Now if I go on my mat here, and this is where you can use your grid lines on your mat as well. So I've got one and I'm going up, so it's roughly about 11. So I want to go to the five and a half line. So I'm going to get in there and I'm just going to get a pen. I'm just going to put a little mark in there because I just want to find the centre before I put my handle on or handle, the hanging strap. I don't know what you really want to call it, to be fair. Either or. Either or. <laughs> <laughs> so I can see my centre marks here. And then all I'm going to do is pop that inside and just sandwich it between. So if anyone's made a um, bag before with a, the flap for the handle, uh, for the closure, it's the same sort of scenario as that. You're just going to sandwich them in. And what you can do is stitch that on first if you're feeling not very confident stitch that on first before you start doing your three layers together but i'm gonna i'm gonna go for it there we go and i've got that in there and i'm just going to put another couple of clips in that side because i don't want these to move if you do want those clips they're at the bottom of your screen right now and they are so much quicker than using pins <laughs> They, they're fab, they are really fab, but everything has its has its um, use, Definitely. certain ones. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some free arm stitching. So if ever anyone's heard that phrase before, what it means is you're going to take your accessory box off your machine if it has that facility. Most machines do have them. You can buy what's called a flatbed machine, which doesn't let you take the accessory off, but you can still do it. But what I'm going to do is it, it makes it easier for you to sew it. Because I'm doing it this way, I haven't got all this bag up here blocking my vision. So I'm just going to sew all the way around the top. So again, I'm doing that quarter inch seam and I've put my stitch length up to two and a half. And I always like to use that needle down facility because it means when you stop, it's not going to move if you accidentally lift your foot up. So I'm just sewing. Caroline's um, actually messaged in a question, just oh. saying, Bernie, how do you set the machine to sew a quarter inch seam? Right, so a lot of machines are different. If you're using your standard foot and you, if you've got a computerised machine, what you can do is you can either use the mark that's on your plate, so on here there'll be a quarter inch line, or it may be on your case here, mm -hmm. there might be a quarter inch line on there, so you can use that. Or on our machine here, if you set the stitch width to 5.5, what that does is it moves the needle if you change your stitch width when you're on st straight stitch. If you put it at 5.5 and then go by the edge of your standard foot. But what I like to do is I would test it on some fabric and then measure it with your ruler to make sure it is a quarter of an inch. Alternatively, when I come to do our sewing machine feet, um, and later in the show, I've actually got a quarter inch foot there. Ooh. So I'm going to show you how you set your machine up for that as well. Okay. So there's a few different ways to do it, but it's getting it, working it out on your machine and then write it down. I have a little notebook at home that I'll often write things down in, settings wise, just so I don't forget because yeah. I've got a few machines, Becky. Shh. <laughs> 
Looking. And different machines have slightly different settings. One of my other machines, I have it set at six for my position rather than 5.5 .5 because I get a different quarter inch on there mm -hmm. if I leave it at 5.5. .5. So yeah, so it just have a little bit of it, but test it and then measure it with you with your ruler. Great tip, thanks. Right, so I've stitched all the way around there. <coughs> We need to finish, Becky. It's it's Already? so quick. It is so quick, this one. So what we want to do now is we want to turn it through. So I say, because like I say, I've left that gap on the outside, it's easier for me to just get hold of it and pull it through. And then... Wow, those colours look fab together. Doesn't it? That's so cool. There we go. And then if that... Now I've done it. I've done it. Oh, so look. I wasn't paying attention, Becky, and I've missed a little bit of me handle, so I'm going back in. So if that happens, just turn it back through again and line it back up, and then you can just go over it. You just, like I say, you don't need to, you don't need to worry, and you don't have to get this um, unpicker out because we do get that out quite it's a that lot. It's that easy to fix, though. It's just it brilliant. is exactly. So I'm going to put it back together again. Find my handle. Where is it? There we go, right. We've got so many people talking about those clips. Um, <laughs> we've got someone saying, literally, I have 200 of those clips. Yeah, uh, so it's don't feel so bad. So useful. <laughs> so what I've done here is I'm going to do it the other way so people can see the other way. If you don't have a free arm on your machine, you can have it this way. My fabric's under here. What you just need to make sure is, is that you don't get your fabric caught underneath. And all I do there is, like when I was putting that circle in, yeah. You just, you can feel that you've got no creases. Yes. So all I'm doing, rather than just unpicking that little bit, I'm just sewing in a little bit further down. And I'm just whizzing all the way around, all the time just feeling there that I've got no creases. Now I'm just thinking, because I'm making a bigger seam here, I'm going to trim my um, form down a little bit more, but it, well, it means I can use my scissors. <laughs> those scissors really popular not a huge amount of those ones left at the minute so grab them if you do want them they are lovely Rosalind messaged in saying on hers she has written fabric only yeah do not touch do not pinch them to cut the bacon rind off <laughs> <laughs> there we go so I'm going to turn that back through there we go yay so now your handle is fixed on. Perfect. <laughs> and you know what as well, right? This is actually reversible as well, you know? Because if you hand-stitched your little gap clothes rather than machine it, yeah. it can be reversible. Hey, that's it bad. Can. Right. So I'm going to keep that open like that because what I want to do is put this inside. So because I did that seam a little bit more, what I'm going to do is just trim this a little bit. And all I'm doing to trim it, that might be all right, you know, let's have a look. Let's have a look. I'm just saying. Yeah, I'm going to go for it. I'm not going to trim it. I think it'll be it'll be okay. This really squishes down. So if you do use um, quite a sturdy stabiliser, you can see how it really does squish down mm. for me to get it in that gap. Okay. The alternative is you can leave the top open, but then you've got to press it and top stitch, and oh, that takes too long. <laughs> so, um, because my gap's quite small, I'm going to go in that way. And I'm going to put it, feed it in. There we go. And then what I'm going to do when I get it inside, I'm just going to make sure that it sits around this orange side. And then we can push the lining in afterwards. I hope my nail doesn't come off, Becky. I had to glue one. Well, I snapped one last night opening the dishwasher. Oh, <laughs> I said a little naughty word in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> So I had, to, I had to glue it back on. So roll on when we can get to the, the salons, salons again. And things, yeah. yeah. So all I'm doing is I'm just going to, I'm going to actually put my hand inside. There we go. And then I can just do that by feel. I can just get it. And it's just manipulating it just to get it into place. And it's worth taking the time just to get it into place. And you can feel when, because you, you've got those seams there. You can feel when it's in place. There we go. I've got it a little bit over that way. 
And then once I get this into place, I'm going to stitch that little bit of hole in the lining and then I'm going to show you how you put it on your, with your sewing machine. Perfect. I can just feel my nail when I'm doing this. <laughs> Just right. as a reminder, we're doing the multifunctional dies at the moment, and we've just had an Eva message in. So we're doing the multifunctional dies, which at the moment, if you get in the big bundle, you're getting around 33% discount. So it's massive saving if you do fancy it. It's on your screen right now, Eva. Then you get your hand out <laughs> like that. And I'm going to sew this little gap up. Am I happy with it? Yes, I'm happy with it. Right, check you're happy with it before you saw your gap up. It actually looks a little bit like the drum bag at the minute, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Because the construction's a very similar way. Mm. Yeah, it's a very similar way. So I'm just going to, all I'm doing when I'm sewing this um, side seam up is I like to just finger press them seams over a little bit. Again, you can use your clips here, but I like to just finger press it so I know they all tucked in. I haven't got no raw edges and then I'm just going to top stitch quite close to the edge of there. There we go. Oh, my foot pedal's gone for a walk. I need, what I need to do is make a little mat for our foot pedal. I've got one at home so it doesn't move across the room as you're sewing. <laughs> you know when you're chasing it with your foot under the table. <laughs> so I'll put that on my ideas for demos for future shows. <laughs> There we go. Yeah, I have so many ideas, you know, and you just don't get time to do them all. To do them all, yeah. Agreed. Okay, and because I do classes as well, a lot of my ladies who come to my classes, they'll, they'll say, can we do this, can we do this? So I have this like list at home that I've started of uh, trying to get everything, everything do. done, but yeah. And then my lining's going to go inside. Now, essentially, you'd give yours a good press. And what you can do is top stitch all the way around that top there. If I get a chance later in the show, I'll top stitch, but I don't know whether we'll have time. But if not, I'll do it after the show. So there, we're finished, Becky. I can't believe it. So I'm that. going to show you how, how you actually how you actually in half put an it hour, in. start to finish, yeah. and even cut the fabric. That's mm -hmm. fab. It is. So you're going to have your machine now. I know I can't put this on the front of the counter. Um, just to show you, but I'm going to show you here. So you're going to have your machine in front of you at your, your table and it is going to be quite close to the edge, okay? Mm -hmm. But then what you do is you take this little bit here and this is one of the reasons why we haven't put wadding in here um, because if you put wadding in, it makes it lumpy and your machine can be uneven and you don't want your machine uneven as you're sewing. So that's why I've just left that as fabric and then... I'm going to put that under my machine, like there. There we go. So my machine's holding that. It's not going to go anywhere. Then this bit is actually going to hang over. Brilliant. I move, oh, I'll get wrong there for moving here. Can you see how it, that would hang over the end of your table? Yeah. Brew. So you could put loads of your essentials in there. Here we go, look. Look at George is brilliant. Look at this. There we go. Brilliant. So any of your scraps, you're going to pop in, in there. And then because it's thin, that's not your machine. My machine's not wobbling. No. Because you don't, you don't want a wobbly machine. That's you want it sturdy. Brilliant. But that's it. And like I say, if I'd hand stitched that um, gap closed inside, I could have made it reversible. But that's it. It's done. So I'm going to keep that there for all my rubbish. I don't need a, I don't need a rubbish bin now. I've got my own. You've got your own one. That's yeah. such a brilliant make. And I can imagine using that for loads of things. Like I'm thinking, obviously, Easter's coming up. <coughs> imagine a little Easter egg hunt basket or something like that with that technique. Um, if you have just tuned in, hi, nice to see you. I'm Becky. That was the wonderful demo of how to use just one of these one, two functional dies. And you get loads of dies within this. So you're going to be getting four. 14 elements in total and just as a reminder with the price today you're looking at a buy two and get one free within that bundle so it's a huge huge discount so 
Let me tell you what you're going to be able to make with this. You're going to be able to make your travel wallet. You've also got your jewellery case, your fold over clutch bag as well. You've got a cosmetic bag, a mini bowling bag, the crescent clutch bag as well you're going to be able to make. You've got the drawstring drum as well, easy for you to say, storage basket and the cylindrical carry case all within this. So all of that you're going to be able to create with this wonderful selection. Of course, the thing that you're definitely going to need, though, to create it is fabric. And have I got a collection for you. I've been looking at this set and it's so feel good. Do you know feel good fabric? When you look at it, it makes you smile. Now, these ones are, of course, your Kyoto selection and these ones are your Stuart Hillard collection. And I'm going to be showing you each one of these. Now, you're going to be getting half meters in in this collection so this one here you have got your carp what i think of this is what i love about this sorry is the carp themselves are really ornate i love the detail in the background can you see the waves swirling around have you got anyone in your family who's a pisces this could be a nice one for them, couldn't they? Because it is very much like the Pisces logo, isn't it? I adore that one. I think it's really modern. Um, so there you go. You're getting that for four ninety nine. I've then got your jade lily pads. These ones, again, the detail is wonderful. You've got that nice sort of random detail with the extra colours in here. Can make sometimes a little bit easier to sew, I think, when it's not really too linear. So um, maybe a great one if you are new. This one here is just four ninety nine for you today. I've then got the blossom, and this is again in your jade background. What do you think of them two together? Yeah, they work, don't they? Because you've got that predominant jade colour shining through. So this one here is your cherry blossoms. Can I unfold this? I'm going to. I'm going to. But just to give you an idea of how much you are getting, because I think it doesn't maybe sound like that much, but this is a huge amount that you're getting here. And that isn't even all of it, because look, I've got another element and edge there too. So if you are brand new and you're thinking, is half a metre a big amount? It's absolutely mammoth. So you're going to be able to make and make and make with that one. So as well as that one, I've got another blossom design. And this is actually the blossom colour that the wonderful Bernie was demoing with. This one has got those cherries in there, the cherry blossom pop. I feel like this has got a really lovely sort of 60s vibe to it. And that's very much back in at the moment, isn't it? Have you seen it in sort of your magazines? I was reading the um, Sunday paper last week and I saw that these kind of patterns, the 60s are coming back in. It always comes back round, doesn't it? So you've got this one here as well. And then the final one, which for me is the absolute must have if you've bought any of the others, because it ties them all in together. You know, a little bit like when you get a card pack set and you've got maybe your main colours and then one with a little bit of everything in. That's what this one is. So check this out. This is, I love this one. You've got these wonderful rice bowls. And can you see how you've got lots of the other elements? So see there how you've got the, the beautiful cherry blossom in this area here. You've got the one with the jade blossom. So you have got a real versatile collection here. This one I think will just tie everything in together. So if you're gonna grab one or two of the others, treat yourself to that one as well. I would, I think it's gonna look great. So those ones are the fabrics for you today. And can I just say, lovely quality fabric, even in the areas where there's white, it's not really transparent, which is fabulous. So they're on your screen for you now, but we've got loads more to come up for you today. We're bringing to you your universal rotary cutter. Now, if you are anything like me, you will adore a rotary cutter. Sometimes as a left-handed person, your hands can get in the way when you're cutting your fabric can't they not with this though you're getting the rotary cutter there 21.99 for you today only and that is down from nearly 30 pounds as well as that you're getting the 60 mil one so the 60 mil of course you're going to get that largest circumference within the roller within the actual roller itself and you're getting the um, case with that one too to um, help replace your blades you've got that in there as well as that you have got your a2 folding cutting mat now i got told earlier on that this was low in stock so if you do want to seize the moment on it then please do because i'm aware that um that's what you've had in front of you isn't it bernie that's the one so if you do want to grab it now is your chance we've also got your rotating cutting mat 
Now this one has got 50% of the stock gone. Bernie, I'm gonna be honest with you. I've never used a rotary cutting mat for fabric before. This sounds like it's going to be a bit life-changing, actually. <laughs> it's absolutely, do you want me to show you quickly how you do, how you use it, Becky? Perfect, because I've never seen anything like that before. So what it does, it comes in two parts, so don't be alarmed yeah. when you get yours and you think, oh, it's come, it's come, it's come apart. Why has it come apart? It actually comes in two parts, so if you can see on the bottom here, yeah, that in. grid fits on the top of there, like that. And then what it does, it'll rotate round. And the, the best part is, if you're doing in, intricate cutting or small cutting, yeah. I'll just get my um, 45 mil roll here. And if I want to sort, uh, cut a curve, when you get to here, you're going to be stuck and you don't want to cut towards yourself. Yeah. So what you can do is you turn the mat. Oh, that's so clever. So you're always <gasps> cutting away from yourself. Are you a lefty, Becky? I am. Oh, so am I. Hey, I, got, I was waving with excitement when I heard you say lefty. Oh, so yeah, so they... in common. I, I know, Joyce <laughs> as well. So we're taking over. We're taking <laughs> over. So yeah, so this is great if you're doing smaller, smaller pieces. I mean, you've got a 12 inch grid on there. You've got all your angle lines as well. You know, so you've got everything there that you need and it just gives it ease. And that's, um, element of safety as well yeah, it, rather than you cut towards yourself you know you if you have got space for a big mat great if you haven't this is perfect and paper crafters can use them as well so you know it's not just soft crafters that's really good with the measurements so if you do want to seize that one and um, um, you may be struggling with the details on that one we're going to try and sort it out for you but do just keep your peels peels your peepers peeled that's what i meant um so yes that is available for you as well today let me remind you, we've got some more goodies on the way. This is your storage template collection with six elements within it. So this is going to help you create all of those storage elements uh, with your wonderful fabric. Big discount on that today, absolutely ginormous. 33.96 in the UK and 39.98 in the US. So if you do wanna seize the moment on that, do so absolutely. We um, will also let you know that I've got some more demos on the way for you as well. One of those coming up for you in a little bit. These ones are so close to going, I will let you know. They are extremely limited stock now. So they are so lovely fabric scissors. As Bernie was saying before, lovely and flat on the base, which means you've got more of that ease of control as well as wonderful, fabulous blades. It is a great discount on that one as well for you. We have got so many more demos coming up and the next demo we're gonna be doing is one that I'm particularly interested in that Eva was asking about earlier on. We do not get to see a versatile amount of feet that often here do we bernie but we've got loads in this bundle we have got absolutely loads because yeah normally when you get a sewing machine you'll get um say you might get the overcasting photo you, you get the zipper the, the standard zipper 40 maybe a button the button putter on a foot i don't know the button foot that must be what it's called your buttonhole but then there's all extra ones that you can get a machine and go oh I need that for this, I need that for this. Mm. And you've got to go and buy that individual feet. Feet can cost anything from so eight pounds up to, you can pay 50 pound for a walking foot, depending on which you know make you get. So having all of these, I mean, you've got 10 in this set and three in this, you're getting 13 feet in there. Absolutely fantastic. I'm gonna go over this set first, which is what we refer to as the quilting machine feet set and obviously you get both sets in the bundle but with these ones here if anyone hasn't seen a walking foot before it looks like a really big chunk of of metal and plastic there and what this does if i turn it to the side on there on the bottom you get there's extra feet now on your machine you've got your feed dogs at the bottom that are pulling your fabric through as you're sewing with a walking foot it has feet on the top as well so what this does is going to pull different thicknesses and different types of fabric through at the same time from the top and bottom so if you've ever sewn two pieces together or you've saw, sewn on some quilting uh, you're quilting um a piece of work and you get to the end and you've got again a bit like that circle putting the circle to the straight edge you've got extra at the end this will eliminate that when you're going through and it works on thin fabric and thick uh, fabric as well so that's your walking foot and then also you're getting your free motion foot 
which looks quite different depending on um, how, how, which one you buy. You can get some with a spring on. This one has the arm there that'll fit onto the side of your shank. So where you take off your whole, um, the ankle on the foot. I'm going to change some shortly so you'll be able to see. So that's um, that one. And then it's a bit like a jigsaw trying to get them back in. There we go. And then the other one in here is your binding tool. Now what this is going to do is help you put binding neatly on a straight edge of a project. The one thing you can't do on this um, is it's not made for going around corners of quilts. That's where you would mitre them. So like if I grab this one here, you can see where we've got a corner here that needs to be mitered, but we've got our mitre tool for that. So you can use hey. your mitre tool for that. So ah. that's one of my favorite tools. So that's your um, bind and foot. So that's that set. Now the other set, oh, I've got a nice pretty board to show you in the other set. Let me pop them aside. Where's my board gone? Look at this. Oh, Stephanie put this together from hey. the office. She's brilliant. Oh. Absolutely brilliant. Hello, Steph, if you're watching. <laughs> and you get these all, they all come in a little case like this. Perfect for storage as well. If you don't want to leave them in there, you can make a little bag to put them in. And then this is great for your, um, you know, your little tools, everything next to your machine for storage. You can never have, as crafters, we can never have enough storage, can we? And so you get you what, if all you of do these. Love it, it's coming up for you later on, actually. Oh, Tiffany, isn't it? Yeah. Oh man. Last day of a birthday. I can't watch. I, I just keep shopping all the time. I don't. <laughs> it's, but you need everything. It's not that you want everything. It's that you need everything. And I mean, I love, I love storage. Um. So I've got all of the feet here, and I've got a sample of everything to show you. And if we get time. I'll show you a couple on the machine um, of how to use it. Now, the first one you're going to get is a pin tuck foot. Now, if you've a lot of these you may not have heard of before, but I've got this piece here. This is a cushion front. I've took the pattern off so you can see it better. And what this is, you saw with a twin needle on your machine, which most machines will come with a twin needle, but they are readily available. And what it does, and you can't see this, but it's actually raised. Yes. Yeah, so good. it feels like a, you know, like a washboard when you, <laughs> mm, yeah. feels like that. This is all raised, but look at the detail. So this is a plain piece of fabric. You've done stitching on there. It looks like a, like a sun, sunrise Sunday. sort of effect. Mm. And then lines along the bottom. And how effective is that on just a plain piece of fabric? It just uplifts your sewing. And this is where you start being able to sort of experiment and play with your different feet and see what effects they have. The next one you're getting is a rolled hem. So a rolled hem most commonly is on a thinner material. You, don't, you wouldn't do a rolled hem on a thick material. It's made for a thinner material where it's going to fray easily. Mm. So it gives you a rolled hem, so it like doubles it over. And if we see this one here, this has been done on the edge of a scarf. You can just see there how this is, a, this is quite a floating material, but it's just double it over and it's stitching really close to the line. Mm. If you try and stitch that close, well, first of all, you'd struggle to double fold it neatly. And then trying to stitch that close, it would possibly catch in your feed dogs under your standard foot. Mm. So that's your rolled hem on the bottom of dresses, on blouses, things like that. Have a look, you know, have a look at your clothes and you'll see if you've got a really thin little double hem, it'll have been put on with a rolled hem foot. Mm. So that's that one. The next one we've got is an overcasting foot. Now, I don't have a sample for this one. So I've actually brought something that's going to show how this will work. So let me grab the oh, and I always when you look in here there's we've got the quarter inch foot as well they look very similar now I'm just getting this out of here I'm not, I nearly grabbed me uh, scissors but I'm not going to because I don't want to damage me uh, rose gold scissors because they only for fabric they're not for poking <laughs> things out that's what you have chopsticks for <laughs> right <clears throat> so if I just pop this up here so this piece of fabric here what I've done is I've frayed it here and what this foot does is it's got like a little black lip if I pop it on the side you'll be able to see yeah I can see, see that. that little black lip there yeah. so what that does is as it's stitching around the edge of your fabric it's tucking in all of those threads hey, so clever. this is especially I frayed this cotton fabric on purpose because cotton doesn't fray very much but if you're using like a wool tweed or a really free, like a, uh, I'm trying to think of some free fabrics, any fabric that frays anyway, you're going to have that edge. What that does is it's putting it 
tucking it all in to Brilliant. make it neat so you haven't got all of those pieces out and it mirrors a bit like an overlocker but obviously it's not going to have the four threads like an overlocker yes. but it mirrors that effect it just encases all of those edges that's so that's your overcast and foot and then we've got the non-stick teflon foot now this one you know when i was saying we had something made out of the so lovely fabric yes this was in that so lovely range but this is pvc yeah fabric so this is what will happen is if you put it under your foot your, your standard foot can stick on it mm. and judder and if you like and bunch up so with your non-stick teflon foot what that does it glides over smoothly so any slippy fabric that you're sewn with that's what you're going to stitch with that's that brilliant. yeah so when you've got a, a shiny side some people also use that if they sew on um faux leather if you find that you're sticking when you're sewing faux leather a top tip for me is always lengthen your stitch and try your teflon foot or your walking foot as well that'll help Fine. help it over there so that's that one and the next one we've got is a gathering foot now apologies if this is a little with this a little bit crease i didn't have quite a chance to iron it but we've got a lovely little apron here and we've gathered all of the bottom and what you do is actually sew the fabric two pieces of fabric at the same time and it'll gather it along the bottom and the however much you hold your fabric or you let it go through quicker you get a smaller gather or a deeper gather if you like around the bottom so that's great for dressmaking as well so quite a lot of these are, i mean you can use them in your um, regular sewing for your home decor and your patchwork and quilt and things like that but also in your dressmaking as well you can introduce them in there the next one we've got is the cordon foot now the cordon foot what it means is you can you use a zigzag stitch on your machine and it zigzags over and feeds them through now this one I'm going to quickly demonstrate because I absolutely love this foot and anyone who watches the shows regularly um, if you remember a few months ago I made a little hoop with a J on for Joe and I did this method with then so I need my uh, chopstick out again I did this method then but I used a sanded foot I didn't have this foot and because we didn't have them on the show, I just used the standard foot and I did wobble a little bit. Sorry, Joe. I did, I did wobble a little bit. Right, so what you're going to do on here, there's, there's, this is little lip, there's like three little grooves there. And I've got just three bits of cord here. This is perfect for your embroidery thread as well. I'm going to thread these in and then you'll be able to see how they sit underneath. So I'm just going to tuck them under there. And you can do one at a time if you want. And each of them will go, oh, brilliant. There we go, look. Can you see yeah. there? Look at that. Perfect. So it's three little grooves. If you only want to put one in or two in, you can, but I've got three in there. I say, I'm, and I've just, I've knotted it to keep them together, but you just put that under the back of the foot. And I'm now going to put my foot on the machine now, like that, with that in place. Okay. And that's in there. And if I, you can see, if I just pull it gently, can you see it pulling through? Yes. It's going through. There yeah. we go. So I'm going to set a zigzag on my machine, which is stitch number three. And I'm going to make it quite wide and quite long. And I've just got a plain piece of, um, oh, I was going to do a bit of quilting on here, but I've got a plain piece of quilting on there. I'm looking for something else, but I don't need anything else. <laughs> <laughs> that there easy. we go. There we go. So we're going to put in there. And I say, this is great if you use like a metallic thread as well. You know, you can get um, different threads. Now, my red one is in the middle. So okay. I want to try and keep it in the middle. Unless I do want to crisscross it. I could if I wanted to. And I'm just going to make that longer and wider. There we go. And then all I'm doing is just keep keep them in a row. Like I say, if, if you want to mix them up, you can. And I'll just do a so little bit. To see this. I'll do a little bit just mm -hmm. to take it out. And I'm oh, where's my scissors? I'm just going to cut that on there. Oh, Mr. Thread. Yeah, hey, I'm so tidy over here with all my threads now. <laughs> and then can you see now? How that zigzag oh, wow. 
Wow. It's zigzagged all them down. And it hasn't, they still move for them to move. That's fab. But you think, like, I did a J, so I drew like a J out, yeah, and then I just sewed that. all the way around into a J for Joe. Lovely. And it just gathers it all down. So if I bring this one back in, this one's been done with, um, so we've got some thread work here. We've got some sequins here. So anything that's going to feed through on there and that and if you think of if you're doing a big piece of work you know we've got our embroidery skeins you get eight meters on that you don't need to cut it keep your long long pieces you can embroider over a whole i call it embroidery because it is if you use a embroidery thread, over a whole project till you've used all your eight meters up and then it, you're not going to have any joints. It's going to be continuous. You do all them patterns you can make. That's I love that Brilliant. one. That's absolutely fabulous. So that's your um, cording foot. Fab. So although it says cording foot, you can use um, thicker thread, wool as well. You could use wool in it as well. Then you've got an in invisible zipper foot. Now it is quite invisible because it's quite clear. Mm. <laughs> and this one, this is going to put your zips in, so you're not going to see them. So your zip is still there, but it's not as open as another zip. No. It is going to be closed. And this is great for dressmaking. Oh. Because it looks really professional. Up. So, yeah. And you can see how close it is. Yeah, and wow. when you press it, I just need to give this a little bit of a press. When you press it, you hardly is going to see that zip at all. So that's your invisible zip. Then we've got the quarter inch foot. So like I was saying earlier, um, about the quarter inch how you set it on your machine if you've got i'll pop it i'll pop it there cause that's it so we'll be able to see it here so on here you know like on the other one we had a little black lip that was inside on the overcasting foot yeah this one the lips at the side and what you need to do is when you pop this mach this foot on you're going to make sure your needle is in the center position mm -hmm. because if you have it left or right it's going to hit the foot and break your needle and potentially damage your machine, you know, whenever you hit something. So always make sure you've got your central position. On it depend, my, This machine is 7 mil width. It'll go from 0 to 7. So 3.5 is our standard one and our Stitch Pro. On your machine, if you're not quite sure, have a look at your manual. But normally when you switch a machine on, it'll either start far left or in the middle. So I have a look for that. And then what you're going to do then is guide your fabric along here so if i grab my trusty little aid piece of fabric here we go so what you're going to do is guide your fabric along the edge of that little part that comes out there mm -hmm. all the way down and you're going to have a perfect quarter of an inch so that's your quarter inch foot so that's great that's i mean yeah i do use mine um sometimes if it depends which machine i'm using i'll use it and then we've got the blind hem foot and this is actually adjustable so with this one it has a screw here and it moves this up and down and what you do is you would you would choose the um relevant stitch if you have a check in your manual which is your blind hem stitch and it's basically has like a running stitch and then it jumps over like a zigzag and yes. back again a little running stitch and what that's going to do is again you know um dressmaking but for clothes um curtains things like that what it's going to do is and we've exaggerated this one so you can see it on the other side it'll have a zigzag and on the outside it'll have a tiny little speck of thread yeah. obviously you would do it matching thread and that's going to do your hems particularly for curtains because you don't really want to be sitting taking up curtains by hand i've done that before and the last but not least is the border foot guide. Now, the, or border guide foot, I should say. Now, what this one is, it has guides on there for you to be able to um, stitch. If I turn this over, you're going to see it better on the back, I think. There we go. So can you see how even those are? Yeah. Now, trying to do them by eye, I mean, you can do it side of foot, but what if you want a wider one? So what happens is... If I get this one out, you've got these light now, red on red. It's not going to help, so I'm going to turn it over. <laughs> what you've got is you've got these guidelines on here. So as you stitch one, it's probably not the best choice of fabric. Let me let me take that away and see. Will it show on that? Oh, that's better on the mat, isn't it? 
If I use, so I'm, this is my original stitch line here, say that I've done yeah. this one here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, right, well, when I put it back under the machine, I'm going to follow this red line here along my original stitch line, which means it's going to stitch here. Yes. In the middle, down my foot. So I'm going to get an extra line there. And then what you do then is you'd move that to the stitch line you've just done. Move along and move along. And you can move either way. So what it does, it gives you that even um, lines. And when we look back at this one, you're seeing how even those are for you to get it when you're doing your quilting. That's brilliant. So that's the border guide. And just a quick one is these are snap-on feet, the majority of them. You've got the um, gathering foot, which you need to take the ankle off your machine. And then you've got the um, free motion foot or the darning foot in here. Mm -hmm. It could be called either. That one you take, take it off. All the others. And these are made from a low shank machine. So I would say 95% of people lose machines that, who have a machine at home, it'll be a low shank machine. If you've got a high shank machine, it, it may be that your machine will only take specialist feet. However, I know some machines you can you can buy an adapter to make it from a high shank into a low shank, so you can use the snap-on feet. That's so fab. you know you can do that if you you know because we love our machines. We don't necessarily want a new machine, but you know if we haven't got all of these feet, it's great. And I mean the just going through them there, saying that's just sort of the tip of the iceberg of the stuff you can do. But my favourite one, I know we're not supposed to have favourites, but mine is that. Corn foot. I love it, Becky. It's just such a good Fab. effect, isn't it's it? It's brilliant, yeah. Actually, speaking about feet on different machines, we've had um, Evangeline uh, in saying, could you use these feet on a brother machine? So it depends on which brother. If if Angeline wants to message back what a model is, I'll be able to let you know. If it's an FS130, 180, uh, 200, the 250, the 280, um, NV1100, because that's where I've got, Yes, you can okay. use them on there if it's a if it's a low shank and it takes the snap on, um, but you might just need to double check your manual. Perfect, thank you. Melissa's messaging saying, first time watching Softer Side, <coughs> hard maker really. <coughs> However, I've inherited my mum's sewing machine and never really used it, so it's good to see what kind of thing I can do. Give it a go because I was saying earlier on I only started about nine months ago and I am in love with it so do give it a go that's a, a wonderful one another one that we had um as well just to let you know is if you do want to grab the your hands on those feet there's 13 elements within there that is a huge discount i know that i've bought feet individually for mine and i have paid about a tenner for some of them if i'd have paid 10 pounds for each of these you'd be looking at about 130 pounds um and also, I would just mention to you as well that loads of people, Bernie, are saying they're going to be saving this show because that demonstration was wonderful about all of the feet. So thank you for that, Bernie. Oh, that's fab. It, I think, again, it's one of them ways if you don't see how something works, you think, well, actually, that, it's just feet. Why do I need those feet? But that's why we love bringing you the shows because we can, we can show you how things work. We necessarily can't demonstrate every single one but hopefully i'll give you a good overview there of the you know the majority of them you and still did. i needed to demo my favorite one <laughs> we have got the wonderful savers coming up now so this is your saver stitch section and boy if you love crafting and bargains Oh, we've got you covered i sounded a bit like tigger then oh <laughs> <laughs> i am a bit of a tigger anyway let me tell you some of the goodies that you're going to be getting in here. We're going to be talking about applique flowers first. Well, this is your flowers and your vines that I'm going to be bringing to you here. You're going to be getting nine elements within this. And we are bringing to you a huge discount deal again on that one, as you can see. It's two for the price of one. Buy one, get one for free. And you're going to be able to make some wonderful handcrafted designs with these. And Bernie's holding a few up that we'll have a nosy at in a moment. As well as that, if you're anything like me, you like to have all of your sewing kit in one area. Well, I tell you what, this is a wonderfully giftable way of doing that. This is a big collection that you're going to be getting within the sewing box itself we have got i just love the finish on this i think it's so it makes you smile doesn't it and you're getting 
loads in here including but not limited to the wonderful clips that everybody absolutely loves and adores you've got bobbin holders you've got your multi zips in here you've got your thread boxes as well um, you've got your cutters you've got absolutely oodles in here so it's all there in one place should be nearly 72 pounds 35 pounds for you today so you've got a massive discount on that one and again really useful with that so complete sealed box selection so that is the one that you're going to be getting your hands on there one so we have got um oh bernie's getting hers out you're sort of very organized bernie i've got everything i've got honestly i get the list for the show and i'll be like right i've got that i've got that i've got, I've it, just I've got, got it i've got I've, it check 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 i've got my <laughs> i'm using my bobbin clamps and my bobbin holders as well to keep my thread together because you can easily mix them up and that's yeah. navy and i often get navy my light's not that great in my craft room i often get navy mixed up with black uh -huh. so this is navy so i keep my navy spool and then you've got the little um the oh, we'll call it a stopper the holder yeah. that that's going to go in there and that is not going to come loose that's ingenious so you don't get the thread in there well actually you do you're getting a thread box in there yeah, as do. well you're getting the saw retro thread box as well so i'm just going to leave that open there just so i can keep looking at it <laughs> As well as all of that, you are you have got the chance today <coughs> to grab your so lovely fabric scissors. I will let you know that this is getting that close away to a limited stock. So if you do want to seize the moment, now is your chance. You're going to be getting them. It is so close to a sellout. You're going to be getting over thirty percent discount on those ones today. They are just ten pounds or twelve dollars seventy five for you. If you love rose gold and I redid my kitchen earlier on this year and I tell you what, absolutely everything is rose gold. Um, these are your rose gold hardware elements that we're going to be um, bringing to you here. Um, so these are going to be elements to help you finish off your bags. So maybe if earlier on you got the uh, multi dies uh, that could make and create bags, maybe you could do little added elements to those ones. So if you do want to. These are just sort of, um, these are the elements you're going to be getting. So let's tell you, you're going to be getting all of them. The rose gold, you've got six pack of the clasp fastening. You're going to be getting the one inch double rectangular sliders and you're getting the ring sliders as well there. So you've got the opportunity to finish off your designs and we are talking about 30 pounds, 30% uh, sorry, saving for you there. So all of that in one place. And again, it makes it look professional, doesn't it? If it all links in really nicely. So those are those elements or some of the elements, should I say, that you're going to be getting your hands on today. Now, if you want even more of a saving, don't forget, if you are brand new today, you can get an extra 20% off your order. Or if you're part of Club Inspire, you can get a massive amount so let's have a little look if you are new at how to get involved with that welcome to club inspire our free loyalty club as a member of the club you can save up to 20 percent every time you shop with us for every pound you spend whether it's in one of our stores or on our website you'll collect one loyalty point the more points you have the more benefits you'll receive as a welcome present, we'll give you 20% discount with your very first order. Once you place your first order, you'll be given 250 points straight away, making you a bronze member. This will mean that you'll receive a 5% discount on all of your purchases until the end of the next calendar year, plus priority postage. 500 points takes you up to silver membership, where you'll get 10% discount, plus free shipping when you spend over £20. When you get to 750 points, you'll become a gold member, which gets you a whopping 15% discount on every order and will ship them to you completely free, no matter how big or small they are. Spend over £25 and we'll send them to you via our premium next day delivery carrier service. When you reach 1500 points, you'll become a platinum member, giving you the same shipping benefits as a gold member, but with the added bonus of a massive 20% discount on all of your purchases. Now on top of that, you'll receive exclusive discounts, sneak peeks of brand new products, special offers and money saving vouchers. You'll have access to an exclusive secret Facebook group to meet like-minded friends to find out information first and to be inspired by all the crafty makes. Become a member of our club today.
involved with us today. We are bringing to you so many more goodies, including your storage templates. They are on the way. Um, we are bringing to you loads of treats and goodies. It's the template collection that I'm going to bring to you now. And we're going to dive on in to a demonstration straight away. So those graphics will come up for you. And again, you've got a huge saving there. You're saving over £16 today. Oh, lovely. Um, that sounded really weird. Oh, lovely. You sound like Fagin. Anyway, Bernie, let's get crafting. I'm over with you. <laughs> I love these. I love our templates. And we've had so many people ask, you know, you know, oh, Benny, are you doing the templates? Are you doing the templates? Can you show us again how, you know, how you use them? Whatever. Um, everyone, not whatever, but, you know, everyone's, everyone's loving these. So you're getting a set of three in here. And I've just got one quick sample of everyone to show. And then I'm going to get into doing the demo. Because I'm looking at the time thinking, woo we haven't got long left it goes so quick it goes so quick so this one is the caddy and this is brilliant now usually when we have these on we have them filled with muffins if Liam's in he'll fill it with muffins for me for my set he's not in today so I'm gonna have to have a word <laughs> they need to leave some for me next time <laughs> although there is a lot of cake outside as well but you've got you've got pockets here that you can put all your you know your craft ones in bread basket Easter's coming up absolutely perfect for Easter on Easter baskets absolutely brilliant for that and then the other one we've got is the so well I call it the sewing roll what's the official name the official the name is sewing, sewing organizer yes, sewing organizer. Sewing organizer so what this is I mean this is fab you're getting so much I mean I haven't got enough room to put everything out there we have you've got so much stuff in here you're getting parts to put your scissors in you're getting little to make little zip pouches to put all your accoutrements in you're getting the pin cushion there you're getting all of the pockets here as well wow. and you're putting the tie on and it's going to wrap up i'm going to quickly show you i'm not going to wrap up but i'm going to quickly show <laughs> you here's one in four leather so here's one you can make it totally different four leather make it as like a wash bag a travel oh, yeah. bag you've got pockets in the side here so this shows how you can change them around and we've got the two zip pockets in here but we don't need the scissors and everything because this isn't for sewing this is for you know your, your toothbrush your toothpaste your soap your shaver you know your jewelry things yeah. like that so you've got a lot of options in there so that's that one and then the last one which is the one i'm going to um demo with but I'm going to show something different is, oh, this is fantastic, the workstation. I'm just going to pop this open and show you it in all its oh, glory. Oh, hey, that looks This good. is massive. It's brilliant. Now, it should have everything in here, but I didn't have time before the show because I was late, as you know. <laughs> I wasn't really. I wasn't. We were, <laughs> we were just teasing everyone. <laughs> but you've got pockets in here. You've got a pin cushion there, little pouches. And you're going to think, well, Bernie, what are these little tabs for? Yeah. I'm going to quickly show you before I get into demo, is your cutting mat. So I've got my rotating cutting mat here. I'll move that up. And what you do is when you make it, the instructions, well, you get full instructions as well, gives you the instructions on how you put this on. Oh, hey. And can you see That's the way you clever. position your tap in there, you've now got a portable cutting station. Hey. You can take that out and use it as an ironing pad as well if you've got a, a a heat proof uh, wadding in you know an insulate insulate yeah. or whatever you use it but you're going to put all your pieces in there and in there we've got snap fasteners on the top or you could use the magnetic fasteners that we've got on the shore and that there is your workstation oh, so what yeah. i'm going to do is i'm going to use an element of the workstation just to make a quick little um zipper pouch oh now i need my cutting mat on there but i'll get it later when i come to use it because it will keep nice in there. Right, so let me get the template. Here we go. So when you open it up, you've got your templates inside. Now, there's some have one. I think the caddy only has one template because you only need one for all the pieces. In this one, you get two templates. And you also get a booklet. Now, the booklet is key till you get sort of used to the pieces. In the booklet, it's telling you to make all of the items that we're giving you the instructions for and we give you full pitch pictorial step by steps and the written word as well 
If you're going to cut the left base, you're going to hold, look at your stencil and look at the red line and it tells you which is the left base. It's also written on the template as well. For the centre base, again, you've got all of these red markings on to tell you which one is and whether it's to place on the full. And I say all the instructions are on the template, but they're all highlighted again on there if you're not sure for reference. And that's the same in each one. So what we're going to do is we're going to use that left base panel, which is this section here. Oh, I'm picking my mat up. <laughs> <laughs> so if we look on here, there's a joint, there's a seam here. Yeah. I know it's a busy fabric, you're not going to see it really well there, but it's this big piece here that we're going to use and we're going to make a pouch and I'm going to make it to put my new um, fabric plates in. And it's so quick. You'll be, you'll, be, you'll be shocked at how quick it is. Right, so I'm going to get some of my fabric now. Oh, Becky, I've got the, have we still got the, um, the rice ball fabric left in? I hope so, because I've got my eyes on that. It's fabulous, isn't it? Oh, I love Absolutely it. Absolutely fabulous. So I want to cut two pieces now. This is my left base here, and it's placed on the fold. So I've just got, I haven't even trimmed down my fabric. I've got my half metre of fabric here. I know my fold is here for two, because I want to cut two pieces on the fold. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to get this, but I want to make sure that my rice balls are not going to be upside down. So I'm going to flip that over. Alternatively, you can turn this, the template over. And I'm going to lie that on there. So I've got folds here. And then what you're going to do is draw around it. Now, you don't need to draw around all of it. All you need to do is draw around the important bits. So I'm going to line that up on there and I'm going to put a line there because that's where I need to go to. I'm going to put a line at the corner and this is saving your pens as well because I know we've just gone out with stock of the pens. Mm. So you have to make them last till the order comes in. So you're just going to come around there and I'm going to use my ruler to cut that and then just around the curve okay. like that. Now you can use your scissors for this for speed. I'm going to go in with my ruler and my rotary cutter. What I wouldn't advise is, is that you use a rotary cutter around the template because this, you know, this is made of plastic. Yeah. You don't want to cut into your template. So I'm going to get my rotary cutter and I'm going to use the 45 mil one. And I'm going to get my ruler. Where have I put my ruler? Do, do, do. Where do I lose it? Oh, there it is. <laughs> And this is where you can use your rotating mat. But just for speed, I'm going to do it on my A2. And it just shows you that you can use your mat. You know, we've got the A2. I mean, I love the A2 one. You've got the A1, which is... It's the A1 that I normally have out. Mm. But I do like the A2 as well. And I'm just... If you had the rotating cutting mat, yeah. you wouldn't have to move your fabric, which is what I've just done there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut all my straight bits first. And I can see my marks that I've been here, and that's just up to my curve. And the good thing about having this um, cutting, the rotary cutter, is that you've got that handle there, so that blade retracts as soon as you stop cutting. Okay. Bonnie's just asked quickly, uh, can a beginner use this set that you're working with? Oh, absolutely perfect for beginners, because mm. we get, we're giving you, we give you, you know, you're getting all of those step-by-step -step details as yeah. well with photos to use. They are really, really easy. And when you see what other, um, once you start looking at the shapes, you think, oh, I can make so-and-so with that. I can make so-and-so with that. Brilliant. A bit like the multifunction dies, you know. So I've got both my pieces here. So now this is, this pretty much is going to be my finished one. I'm going to put, um, a zip in as well. Now I've got the zips on the roll, I've got the red. I thought the red would go really, really well with this. Now, because of time, I was going to put some tabs on the end of here, but I know we're pushing for time, so I'm not going to put any tabs on. What I am going to do is cut this zip down, and I'm not going to use my rose gold scissors. I'm going to use our um, purple ones, because you can cut through different things with them. I've got a right mess all over here. <laughs> oh, you're just like me. I'm right mess master. right so <laughs> what we're going to do yeah i'm terrible i am what we're going to do is we're going to bring the zip totally out of the way and you can put a little clip 
on your, where's my clips gone? You can put a little clip on the end there so your tab end doesn't come off. So there's another use for your clips. Great. Okay. And then I've got one of my outside pieces here. I'm going to put my zip face down and just let it hang off the end there. And then I'm also going to get my lining. Now, I've gone ahead and cut... Oh, I've got this carp. Look at this fabric. I've actually put some fusible fleece on the back of here. You could put um, wadding on the back of their interfacing. I've made one of these out of faux leather before. Oh, it was fabulous. It was absolutely fabulous. And I didn't put any um, lining with that because I didn't need... I didn't need any. So I'm going to quickly... And I need to change to my zipper foot as well. I've just nearly forgot about that. <laughs> you can put them in without the zipper foot zips, but I wouldn't. I'd always put even for speed. I would change it because what you can find is you can hit your, you can hit your teeth. Right. Loads so of people messaging in about the foot. Evangeline got in touch saying her brother is a HC one eight five zero. HC1850, right, yeah. so off the top of my head I haven't come across that model, so what I'll do is, this afternoon when I get home, I will look on the comments, as I always do, I like to go back and look on the comments, and I'll find out for you, and I shall let you know. Perfect. So if you bear with me till this afternoon, was that Angela? Uh, Evangeline. Evangeline, yes, sorry Evangeline, yeah, so I will do that. Right, so... I'm now going to put this together. I'm going to have to be quick, Anna. <laughs> I have faith in you. <laughs> right. Let me lengthen the stitch. That'll, uh, that'll get it going, stitch down. So, yeah, so all I'm doing is just making sure that I've got all of this sandwich together. And I'm going to go all the way down that top. And then I'm going to repeat the same on the other side now i did have a little handle that i was going to put on as well because i was thinking um i was going to have loads of time and i was going to use some of the rose gold um the little rectangle tabs mm. which are perfect for things like this if you want to put a little handle on yeah. so let me just check i've got all that in so there we go i've got one side of the zip in i'm going to turn it to the other side and then just to put the other side in if you put your both your fabrics to one side and if you think about it you're going to match yeah so again it's all about matching like when we're putting the circle curve in we were matching look at that red zip goes beautifully doesn't it perfect and then i'm going to put that one on that side and then again i'm going to put this one underneath and match that up and it feels like you're all fingers and thumbs when you're first sort of trying to line this up mm. but if you say if you get your clips on and you don't need many, you just need to sort of hold it in place. And I'm just going to put two in, because I know I'm conscious of time. There we go. And I'm going to whiz down there. going to do all the way down here and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it up again so my balls match and face right sides together my cap match I love this cap fabric I didn't get this one last time so I, I like ask for like two or three depending on what demos I'm going to do I'll say like two or three half meters and we rarely where we get all the collection because we don't need it we don't you know you don't need all yeah. that for, for it but oh boy I wish I'd uh, the crane. I wish I'd got some of the crane one because that one went really quickly, and the bamboo that was fab. Right, let's have a look. There we go. So my zips in there, perfect. The other side, and then I'm going to stitch all the way around, opening my zip because my zip needs to be open. And I bet I bet I'm not going to get this finished, you know. Don't think I'm going to get a fit. Shall I, will, shall I stay back to finish it, Becky? Yes, actually, you if you would. Yes, think, please. Yeah. If you could stay back after class. Or you stay could just back. do it at home and put pictures on social media. It's up I to you. I could do, couldn't it's up I? To you. <laughs> I could. I'll, I'll see. I'm just going to keep sewing till the end of the show. 
<laughs> Whilst you'll carry on with that, let me just let you know that we have got from three o'clock UK time today, Totally Tiffany. It is the end of the birthday event and it is going to be mega. We have got Totally, we've got Tiffany herself joining us virtually. I've also got Debbie with a Y, Debbie Robinson joining me as well. So that's at three. And am I allowed to mention that we've got a giveaway? Too late, I have. So that's coming up for you as well. Um, and then I've got Second Chance Sunday as well for you. That's going to be coming up from you from seven this evening. Um, Bernie, I know you're sewing as quickly as you can, but I'm afraid we have run out of time. I'm staying till I finish it, though. <laughs> I love it. Bernie, it's been so lovely working with you. I really do appreciate it, and I've learned absolutely loads. So thank you so much. You're welcome. I can't wait to work with you again, Becky. Two left-handers, two Bs together. I love know. it good isn't it <laughs> thank you so so much as well for messaging in i will see you in an hour and a half where we've got more crafts that giveaway and totally tiffany i'll see you in an hour and a half <laughs>